All right, so on to the question of the day, which comes from Anne. And again, the question is, what tips do you have for young professionals who are just getting started in their careers in terms of getting a strong start towards retirement, savings, and planning? You always want to start with taking inventory of where you're at. So make a list of what your income sources are, where that money's going, so what we're spending it on, what your retirement assets are, what your liabilities are. So take a, a inventory. So you just kind of, kind of put it all together and essentially make your own balance sheet. So balance sheet, just like how you've probably heard the term before that all companies have and essentially lists, you know, what their assets are minus their liabilities is their net worth. You want to keep track of that for your household. It's something you don't have to pay like super close attention to, but it's something to update kind of once a year. And you can slowly see yourself track upwards as you start paying those debt downs as assets starts growing, you'll see your net worth start getting bigger and bigger. So now once you figure out kind of where you're at, Next step is you want know, to dig into your budget. So I always say that the only thing stopping you from retiring is you don't have the income to replace it. So look what kind of income is coming in now and where it's going. Is there anything I can get rid of or reduce to help you know free up some cash flow so I can put it towards building other assets? So always take an inventory of what needs to go. Now, a couple of hidden ones you guys might not know about. So go ahead and look at your car insurance. If you're paying monthly for car insurance, if you switch that to quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, that alone could shave off a couple hundred bucks off of your car insurance bill. Other thing you can look at is look at your deductible. If you have a healthy emergency fund, you probably don't need your deductible being a hundred bucks. You could probably increase that to $500 or a thousand dollars because when we have higher deductibles, typically means that you're less likely to use the insurance. Otherwise you just pay it out of pocket and the insurance comes reflect that in terms of typically of lower premiums. So to take a look at your property and housing insurance to see if you can increase deductibles or change the frequency of how you make payments. And that alone can usually free up a couple of dollars per year. Next step I'd go with is look where your assets are sitting. Emergency funds sitting in big banks these days are doing squat and you're really making them more money than they are giving you. So right now, we're really good to use is something called high yield savings accounts. So just like the savings accounts I'm sure you guys already have, except these ones are typically online. They're still FDIC insured. There's typically no minimums. There's no fees. They just pay a lot more money than what big banks pay. And to put it in perspective, the average bank right now pays 0.06% a year, which is like nothing. You go to a high yield savings account, these things are paying somewhere between four and 5%. Now, as interest rates started to come down, which we're expecting to this year, you can expect the high yield savings accounts to also come down. So maybe next year they might only pay, you know, 3%, but 3% is still gonna be better than 0.06. And so the sooner you guys can make that move, the sooner you can start earning interest on that money. Next tip I would just say is take some time to learn or get an idea of how taxes work and how it impacts you. Because at the end of the day, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And we don't want to give the IRS any tips. So a common thing I've seen the last four or five tax returns I've reviewed is they're going to hit with underpayment penalties. So a lot of people don't know this, but the IRS is just like us in terms of they like getting paid evenly. They don't like when we wait till April to pay them. So if you owe a large chunk of money in a given year and you wait till April to pay them, typically you get hit with an underpayment penalty. Now, if you think about it, if you're, you work for your employer and instead of paying you at the end of the year, your last paycheck, they said, we'll give it to you in April. You wouldn't probably be too happy with that. And you'd probably say, hey, you got to owe me for you know the hassle of going four months without my pay. IRS says the same thing. They like getting paid evenly. So when we wait too long to pay them, that's when you have penalties. So in case you aren't aware of it yet, the tax deadline is different than the tax filing deadline. So April 15th, that's the day you have to file your tax return. That's not the day taxes are due. Your taxes are due January 16th. That's when you're supposed to have all your taxes paid up. Yeah, you can pay it after that, but that's typically when you get hit with those penalties if you're not at the safe harbor numbers. And for reference, a safe harbor number is the number of taxes that you need to pay to, to the IRS in a certain year to avoid those earned penalties. So that number is gonna be based off of what your tax bill was last year. So if last year, your line 11, like how much the IRS actually kept from your taxes, let's say it was $10,000, your safe harbor number for this year would either be $10,000 or $11,000, which is just 10% more if you made over $150,000 in the year. So knowing your safe harbor number is important for avoiding these RFAP penalties. The last tip I'd say is really just to get started saving as early as possible and just be consistent with it. So I see too many people get started way too late. They're so focused on paying down their car loans that are charging them three or 4% or they're worried about their mortgage rate being at five or 6%. Honestly, those rates, they're already not 
that bad. Yeah, they're more twice as more than it was a couple years ago, but the grand scheme of things, paying 6% is not going to kill you. What kills you is not putting money away for your retirement and missing out on those returns. Case in point, 2023, SP500 index returned 26%. So if you didn't put any money in that, you said, oh, no, 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 I'm going to pay down my mortgage instead because it's charging me 6%. Congratulations, you might have saved 6% but you've missed out on earning 26%. And when you look at the way compound interest works, over time, as your mortgage comes down, the amount of interest you're paying slowly goes down. Whereas when you're saving money, it compounds every year and it slowly starts to build on itself. So you can be the person that you know, does the 15 year mortgage, puts everything they can into it. So the time you're you know, 45, 50, you don't have a mortgage anymore, that's great, but now you have less time to make it up. And time in the market is so important. The person that stays in the market the longest you usually has they're going to get more good years than people that are in there for just 10 or 15 years so you want to be consistently saving into the market because you don't ever know which year is going to be good which year is going to be bad and it could happen that while you have a mortgage you put more money away if the market's flat for five or six years or just down then it's not going to work out at all so put money away first pay yourself first before you worry about paying down your other debt like that now credit cards different story they're charging 25 percent. absolutely pay that off but when you're talking about low interest you know single digit numbers i wouldn't be too overly concerned with paying them down if you're not adequately putting enough money away now when it comes to what do i select you know what do i invest in obviously it does depend on risk tolerance wise and stuff but i took a big step in making it as easy as possible for you guys so we have our you know plan three our dcp and 403b investment advice systems out there so at any time anyone watching state come on you can subscribe to the plan and we use basically to let us know what account you need help on whether it's just plan three just dcp or both and then you tell us what risk tolerance you want so if you're young you're probably going to be more on the aggressive side of things because you have more time in the market if the money goes down by 50 percent tomorrow you're not retiring tomorrow so you can probably wait out the storm so when you're young you can pay aggressive with it our models will tell you exactly what to purchase inside of those accounts and when which is the really cool part when to make changes to them now we have strategic models which is kind of your buy and hold so every quarter you'll get an update so you log in once you put the trades in and then forget about it for three months come back in we'll tell you what to make changes so it's very low time commitment in that aspect then if you want to be a little more hands-on we have tactical models which just means more active trading and we basically track a couple of the key indicators in the market and when two out of the three flash red enough we start to raise cash so go back to 2022 our tactical models flash red in january and we said hey go to cash and we had about 55% of people's money, or we recommended that they hold about 55% in cash, which kind of seems crazy. But if you look what happened in 2022, the market went down in January, February, continued all the way down until October when it bottomed. Now our model said, hey, in September, deploy your cash back into the markets. So it timed it almost nearly perfectly where the bottom was, and it's been up ever since. So that's just tactical investing or trying to time the market. It doesn't always work out, but that's just one recent case that it actually did work out in our favor. They hold half their cash. They missed most of that 20 some odd percent downturn and they were to buy back in at the bottom and reap the rewards. So that's tactical investing. You have both options. You can switch between both of them inside of that model. All right, so if you want more information on that, links are gonna be in the show notes below. I'll catch you guys all next week. And remember that your future depends on what you do today.